Hey there, I'm Jenny. Since Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off was published in Nitty a couple of weeks ago, I've been getting quite a few people asking me if there is an accompanying cast on. So there is an accompanying cast on, and I'm creating this video so that I can show you how to do it. So here is Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off. Some of you may recognize it. And the cast on is down here. This is Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off from the top. You'll recognize that it follows the ridges of the ribbing and the cast on does the exact same thing. Um, and both of them are super, super elastic. So they're great partners. I'm actually gonna start by showing you guys how to practice this cast on using your fingers without any, uh, without any needles. So this is basically a series of slip knots. So to do a slip knot, you take your yarn and you twist it so that the working end, this is, here's your short end, goes under and working end comes over. So you're going to start with that loop. In order to make a slip knot, you need to get this working yarn through this loop here. You need to come up through there. So I'm going to reach in and grab it and pull it through. And here's a slip knot. Grab some yarn, twist it, put it around your finger, get the working yarn around your finger and pull it through. Ta-da! Two slip knots. Let's do another one. Now we're going to try that using a needle instead of a finger. So once again, just take your yarn and flip it into a loop. Put your needle inside the loop. Grab the working yarn and pull through the loop. Oops. And tighten. Slip knot number one. Now you know how Cat Bordy likes to tell animal stories in her videos? I have an animal story for this particular video which is that if you look at sea lions on a beach, you may notice that they sit really close to each other. And we're going to pretend that these slip knots are all just a collection of sea lions. So what that means is the next time you do your next slip knot, you're going to snug it up right next to the first stitch like that. And I'll show you why it's important in a minute. So you snug it right up there, grab your yarn, pull it through. And once again, grab your yarn and pull it through. So I'm going to show you why it's important to think of these stitches as sea lions. Let's say that you're some other critter on the beach, and you don't want to be near those sea lions, so you're going to go way over here, way over here. I'm going to grab my working yarn and pull it through and pull my knot. So you still have a series of slip knots, but you have this huge gap. Now, most cast-ons, you can just push them together and then pull the working yarn, and the gap will go away, but not with this one. With this one, if you pull this yarn, the harder you pull this yarn, the tighter you're going to make this knot. You're still not going to make the slack go away. So the only way to make the slack go away is just to take the slip knot out and do that particular one again. So once again, right up next to the previous stitch and over. Okay, so I've told you about one finicky thing about this, this cast on, which is to think of each slip knot as a sea lion sitting right up next to another sea lion. Another thing that you need to be careful to do is that when you're tightening these stitches, you have to put your thumb right next to where you pull. So for instance, sea lions, sea lion buddies, working yarn goes over, working yarn comes through. When you're pulling the working yarn, you put your thumb right next to it when you pull. Now I'll show you what happens if you don't do that. If you don't keep a finger right next to that knot when you pull, 
you're going to get this crazy thing here, like that. So just make the universe a happy place. Put your thumb or forefinger next to your knot when you pull it, and everything will be good.